2013 is the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who, so we're celebrating with a monthly special edition of Geek Crash Course on each Doctor in the series. First up, it's the Doctor who started it all, William Hartnell. Get it? Doctor who started it all? 15 seconds in, Michael. 15 seconds in. We're back. <laughs> On November 23rd, 1963, Doctor Who premiered on the BBC. The basics of the show were simple. The Doctor... A mysterious time traveler. And his companions... Often pretty ladies... Travel in the TARDIS... A machine that can travel in space and time and which is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. To faraway places, planets, and even different points in history and the future. Designed as an educational show by creators Sidney Newman, C.E. Weber, Donald Wilson, and producer Verity Lambert, Doctor Who ended up being essentially the perfect show. With the device of the TARDIS, writers could take viewers anywhere, anytime, and do anything they wanted in terms of story. Classic Doctor Who also worked in a serialized format, so stories from that era were anywhere from two to four, even up to 14 episodes each. But each episode of the show was only about a half hour long, as opposed to the hour long format we know today. William Hartnell began the 50-year franchise as a curmudgeonly old man living in a junkyard. He's sort of a stripped-down doctor, no sonic screwdriver, no mention of other Time Lords, just one heart. He's just sort of a wanderer in the fifth dimension. Not much else. Fifth dimension? That's the Twilight Zone. Isn't that the fourth or the... Sixth? Sixth? The first Doctor's outfits generally skewed towards an Edwardian gentleman. Frock coats, plaid trousers, cloaks, hats, and a classy walking stick. He also had a bad attitude, basically kidnapping his first companions. More often than not, he was mean and manipulative, but he began to soften up towards his companions at the end of his tenure. The first Doctor's death was from exhaustion. His body wore out during his first encounter with the Cybermen, and, with the help of the TARDIS, the Doctor rejuvenated his body, basically growing younger. We'll have more on this next month. Doctor Who had trouble from the start. The original taping of the pilot didn't go so well, but the BBC let director Waris Hussein and the cast reshoot with a modified script. The first Doctor's companions included Susan, who's the Doctor's granddaughter and a fellow alien in disguise. Unfortunately, she's discovered by... Barbara Wright and Ian Chesterton. Barbara's a history teacher and Ian is a science teacher. They're essentially kidnapped on their discovery. An orphan from the 25th century, Vicky, is the first new addition to the TARDIS after Susan leaves. The Doctor, Barbara, and Ian pick her up on an alien planet, saving her from the maniac who killed her family and fellow colonists and taking her off to adventure. Stephen Taylor is a former prisoner of the diabolical mechanoids. He started off as a stowaway on the TARDIS, sneaking in as Barbara and Ian leave. Katarina is a companion from ancient Troy who replaces the departing Vicky, but she only lasts about a serial and a half. She's actually the first companion to die in the series. Sarah Kingdom is sort of a companion from parts 4 through 12 of the Daleks Master Plan, and she replaces Katarina. She's a space security agent fighting the Daleks. She's killed when a device built by the Doctor to defeat the Daleks ages her to dust. Dodo is a London girl from the 1960s who joins the Doctor and Stephen in their journeys. Sadly, she ends up brainwashed by the evil computer Wotan, and when she recovers, stays behind on Earth. Ben Jackson is a 60s Eric Cockney guy who helps the Doctor and Dodo battle Wotan and the War Machines, joining the first Doctor after they defeat the evil computer. After Dodo's departure, Polly Wright joins the Doctor and Ben. She's a higher-strung Chelsea girl and opposite to Ben, but the pair come to like each other through their various adventures. She, along with Ben, is one of the companions to witness the first Doctor's regeneration into the second. The 11th Doctor era has featured a few cameos of the first Doctor. The Atraxi montage in the 11th hour features the first Doctor in a clip from The Time Meddler. A photo of the first Doctor can be seen in the Mirror Matcher printout in Vincent and the Doctor and the Doctor's library card from Vampires in Venice. Also, Eleven calls himself a daft old man who stole a box in The Big Bang, referring to his earliest incarnation. Sadly, a good chunk of the first Doctor's adventures have been lost to time due to the BBC's policy of wiping old tapes to save space, but a good portion of the vital episodes are left. 
Our favorites include... An Unearthly Child is the first serial of the entire series. We'd recommend just watching the first episode as the rest of the serial is a little weak. The Daleks is the second story of the entire series, and it's where the creators decided to break their own rules and introduce monsters into the show. They succeeded with Terry Nation's creation, The Daleks. It's missing a few episodes, but The Daleks still essentially works, though the terrifying pepper pots are not at their best in this story, only able to move along electrified platforms, kind of like maglev trains. The Time Meddler is the first story to feature someone else with a TARDIS. He's never called a Time Lord because they hadn't invented the term yet, but the Monk is a pretty cool villain. He's played by Peter Butterfield, and his battle with the Doctor in 1066 England is a lot of fun. The Tenth Planet is the final story of the First Doctor era, and it's also the first story to feature the Cybermen. Sadly, it's also missing a good chunk of footage, including the entire last episode, save for the regeneration scene. But if you can track it down, go for it, as DVDs generally include the episode audio and pictures from the episode taken by fans, kind of stitched together. It works. What's your favorite First Doctor story? Let us know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe for more Geek Crash Course. In the original version of An Unearthly Child, the Doctor mentions offhand that he and Susan are from the 49th century. This line was removed from the final version, and the Doctor's origins would remain a mystery until the final story of the Second Doctor era. That is it for our first Doctor Who special of 2013. We have 11 more of these coming, beginning of every month, uh, and episodes in between, and all kinds of other crazy stuff. So make sure you subscribe, uh, and like it, and share it, and favorite it, and love it. There's a lot of buttons. Hit them all. You can always find us on Twitter, Facebook, and our website, geekcrashcourse.com. Three more buttons. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week on Geek, Geek Crash Course. Course. If I had a son of a screwdriver, I'd be like, <laughs> but he didn't have one. Damn it.